Okay, so in this video, I just want to give my views on CDK for Terraform. And before we continue, I want to say I'm no expert on infrastructure stuff. I'm no expert on AWS. I've just been using it for my own learning. And for those of you who know nothing about Terraform or infrastructure, then let me give you a quick explanation. So if you're working with a medium to large size web application, you are more than likely going to use a cloud provider, whether that's AWS or GCP or Azure or Heroku, DigitalOcean, there are so many out there. And their UI can be quite cumbersome. So if I go into the AWS UI, which is here, I've got my EC2 instances, they're empty at the moment. If I wanted to set something up, I'd have to go into the right service, do a lot of clicking and select the right parameters and all those things. But with something like Terraform, or any other infrastructure as code platform, you can write codes to configure what you want your environment to be. And when you run the code, it will set everything up for you with minimal input from the UI. So that's the biggest advantage, there are more, but this is just a quick explanation. I don't wanna to touch into those too much in this video. Okay, so that's infrastructure as code, which is Terraform, but what is CDK? Well, CDK stands for Cloud Development Kit. And this, in my opinion, is truly infrastructure as code. So when I scroll down, you can see that you can either write TypeScript or Python, and it will do that provisioning for you in AWS, Azure, GCP, whatever you're using, they've got 200 plus more providers. And this is the path to take if you already know a programming language, but want to get into infrastructure as code. Now let me show you some code. So here, this is a file that creates an EC2 instance which does it down here using AWS. So it uses the AWS provider. It logs in with my credentials and it creates an EC2 instance for me with this AMI and this. Now, if we don't know anything about AMIs or instance or tags, don't worry. All you have to know is that this block is going to create a server for me in AWS where I can host my code. So that's the bulk of this file. There's also a variables file. And if you look at the top here, it has my organization which I made up and this uses Terraform Cloud. This actually isn't that important. I can get rid of it and the code will still work. So this is using something called HCL which stands for HashiCorp Config Language. HashiCorp is a company that made Terraform and so when I run this code this will create an EC2 instance for me in AWS. So this is pretty simple right now. Now if you're a programmer and you already know say JavaScript or TypeScript to learn this configuration file just to deploy your, your server is, I wouldn't say it's a learning curve because it's not difficult to learn, but it's an extra step which can be avoided. And that's where the CDK comes in. So here is the exact same code written in TypeScript. So here is a class called my stack that extends Terraform stack. It will log into AWS with my credentials. It will create a new EC2 instance for me with the same AMI and same tag and will create this output file. This is unnecessary actually. This is just an extra step. But as you can see, for someone who knows TypeScript or JavaScript, this is a lot more easier to understand, to digest and to manipulate. And let me actually run this now to prove to you that this works. So I'm gonna go into my terminal and write CDK TF1. So now in the background, that's gonna deploy my code. And at some point I'm gonna to have to manually tell it to actually go ahead and do it with a confirmation of yes, but I'll leave it running in the background. You don't actually have to see it. And let me talk about this piece of code. So you've already seen that my linter, which is Sonar Lint, has a problem with the way this file is set up. This is the way that HashiCorp or Terraform recommend you lay out your file, your TypeScript file. But although it makes sense, in my opinion, is a bit weird. So you can see we have this main class, which is my stack. And what that does is when it gets initialized with the app and the name, so VPC example, it will run the constructor and instantiates three other classes. So AWS provider, new instance, and Terraform output. And I've never in my life of using JavaScript seen instantiation done in the constructor. It's kind of like chain instantiation. And of course it's fine, you can do it, but it looks weird. And that's why my linter doesn't like it. Another reason is I'm instantiating a class, but not signing it to a variable. And therefore I'm kind of not using it, but I am. And yeah, it, it just generally looks a bit weird. 
So I've made a slight tweak to make it more readable and less offensive to my linter. And this is it. So it's more code, but it's not weird in the sense that the constructor is still here. It still calls the super keyword, which will reference Terraform from Slack. And then it will run this init, which will run this AWS provider function and then run instance and then run outputs. And even though it is more code, it, it's more digestible, as you can see. So please, anyone at HashiCorp watching this, please think about ways to make the code less weird and easier to digest. Another thing I think is, is quite odd is once I create this file, it then compiles a JS file for me, which I guess makes sense, but even for files I don't use, like this file I'm not using for anything, and it's still creating a JS file for me, as well as a type definition file, which I'm definitely not using. I don't know why it's doing this. I have a feeling it uses the JS file to do the actual heavy lifting, and it doesn't need the TS file, of course, but this can be done in a separate folder. It can be done in an output folder. I don't need to see it in the root. I don't need to have it generated whenever I run the code. I don't need to see it. It can be hidden from me in a hidden file, and that would be ideal. But apart from those two things, I think this is really cool. This is really interesting. And going forward with my projects, I'm definitely going to provision them using the TFCDK. A cool thing about this is that when you deploy it or when you synthesize this code, it will actually generate a Terraform config similar to the one I showed you in the previous project. So this code here will generate to this config and it's very similar apart from this metadata here very similar to what I showed you before. So if we jump back to that project, you'll see, okay, this is using a TF file and this is in JSON, but it's very similar. We have a provider, we have the resource, which is the instance, and this can easily be read by someone who has experience with Terraform, but not CDK, if that makes sense. Now the Terraform CDK isn't the only CDK on the market. There's something called Pulumi, which does a similar thing, but doesn't have the kind of Terraform name, but isn't associated with Terraform. And Terraform is the biggest infrastructure as code platform out there. So in my opinion, it makes sense to, to use that over something like this. But Pulumi is more developed as a CDK, so it supports more languages, as you can see. The Terraform CDK only supports TypeScript and Python, but it supports JavaScript, Go, C Sharp. And Pulumi use a bit less weird syntax. They don't kind of instantiate classes inside constructors and, and all that stuff. If you have time, I recommend you flick through their GitHub. They have a lot of examples in different programming languages to kind of get a feel of how the syntax works. Also, AWS have their own CDK. So if I wanted to only target AWS for my project, then this would be great. I haven't used it before, but it looks like it works a similar way to the Terraform CDK. So there you have it. That's my view on the Terraform CDK. I believe that it's the future for infrastructure as code. I believe more developers will move on to CDK and use their own language instead of using the HashiCorp config language. Before I go, let's actually finish doing this. So let's confirm this and have that run on AWS. If I check this now, I think it should show me something. Yep, here we go. So this is the example since I just created, it's pending, it hasn't done its thing yet. So once that's done, and our instance is running. And that's pretty much it. I hope you found this video useful. It's a bit of a detour from my kind of web and game dev videos, but I hope it's helped someone out there. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.